All right, hey, what is up, guys? So, uh, just continuing this DMVPN post. Figured I'd do a quick video just configuring DMVPN and then also taking a look at some special routing considerations specific to EIGRP and OSPF. <clears throat> so, to kick things off, there is no tunnel config on the hub or any of the spokes. All we have right now is our default routes pointed out to the provider's uh, cloud here, the internet as it's signified. And yeah, so no tunnels. So we're going to start from scratch. I'm actually just going to bring up a text editor so I can script most of this stuff out. As you can see, some of my notes are in there from when I was doing the post earlier. Awesome. All right, so let's see if we can't organize this a bit. Good enough. All right, so on the hub, we're going to start off. We're going to make our tunnel interface. We'll give it an IP address of 172.16.10.1 slash 24 mask. Nothing exciting there. We're going to do tunnel source is Ethernet 0 slash 0. Our tunnel mode is GRE multipoint. Now for the NHRP configs, we're going to do IP NHRP will map all multicast to uh, dynamic. And IP NHRP network ID, we'll give it a network ID of 1. Give it a quick look over. Yep, that's it. So we'll jump on the hub and we'll set that up really quick. Um, again, the spoke config is a little bit more involved. We'll start off on spoke one here. And now we're going to map multicast to 150, 101.2. That is the NBMA or the, uh, the actual IP address assigned to the hub router. And this, again, in this scenario, it's the, it's the, it's the um, internet address, the public IP. Yep, so we're going to map that to all multicast traffic. We're also going to do an NHRP map so that 172.16.10.1, the tunnel IP, gets mapped to this public address. And then finally, we have to tell the spoke who they're going to be registering all their next hop information with. We'll do that with IP NHRP next hop server, NHS, and we'll give the private IP or the tunnel IP <clears throat> as 172.16.10.1 and that should be it. Alright, so I'll pop that onto spoke 1. Over on spoke 2, all we have to do is change the address. And spoke 3. Now back on the DMVPN head end, we should be able to do a show DMVPN. And uh, assuming I didn't miss anything, we should see that our three spokes have registered their uh, their tunnel IPs as well as their uh, MBMA or their um, their public IPs. All right, that's the case. So I should be able to ping the private IP address of the hub, and I can do that from spoke one. Do show DMVPN. <clears throat> you can see right now all we have is a static entry and that is the static entry we did on the tunnel interface right here and if I try and ping the tunnel interface of spoke 2 which was 172.16.10.20 we'll see that works just fine I can do a show DMVPN again and we get this new dynamic entry when we built this dynamic tunnel to spoke 2 and as you would expect over on spoke 2 show DMVPN our dynamic tunnel back to um, spoke one is uh, showing there as well. So <clears throat> that's DMVPN. We have our tunnel interfaces set up. Our DMVPN cloud is working. Now what we want to do is experiment with some different routing protocols. We'll start with the absolute easiest first, in my opinion, um, which is EIGRP. It requires a little bit of work on the hub router and then you get to leave everything else default on the spokes. So, so that we have something to route to, I'm going to set up a new loopback address 
on each of the um, <clears throat> on each of the DMVPN routers. The 172, 16, and then the last two octets are just the router ID that I was giving it. So for the hub, it'll be uh, 172, 16, 11. For the spokes, it'll be uh, 1010, 2020, and 3030, and a slash 32 mask. And again, all the work that we have to do EIGRP-wise, in terms of anything different or maybe a little um, unusual about EIGRP, we get to do that all on just the head end. So what we have to do here is we have to turn off Split Horizon because <clears throat> we want all of our routing advertisements that are coming from the spokes. So when router or from spoke one sends his loopback information up via EIGRP, we want to make sure that we're sending that information back out the tunnel interface. That way it can reach spoke two and three. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in order for that to happen, we have to do no split horizon EIGRP. And it's going to be EIGRP 100. I'm just going to throw our network statement in really quick also. It's just 172.16. A wildcard mask of 00 255.255. Just so we catch the tunnel interface and the loopback interface in, in one uh, swing. So then the next thing that we have to do in order for EIGRP to work is we're going to do no IP next hop, and I'm totally guessing where these hyphens go. Self? Sure, we'll tell if it's wrong. So no IP next hop self for EIGRP 100. Now what this is doing is by default, if you just turn off Split Horizon, what the hub router would do is it would forward out those advertisements received from the other spokes, but it wouldn't. But it would set the next hop address as itself. So that being said, you know if it's spoke one, um, spoke one would advertise its loop back out, and it would reach the hub. And then when the hub sends that EIGRP route out to spoke three, instead of seeing 172.16. 10.10 .10 as the next top, spoke three would see 172.16 10.1. And we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure that our routing tables are accurate and they're showing that the next top address in the DMVPN cloud are the uh, actual spokes um, that are advertising that route or originating that route, I guess. That way we know to build our dynamic tunnels. And we're going to give OSX the second here. It's just taking its time. There we go. Sometimes with these screencasts, it just hangs up for a second. Cool. All right, so that's all the all the heavy lifting we have to do right there for the hub. Spin that up. Look at that. Got the command right on the first try. Sweet. We'll do a show IP EIGRP int. Make sure that our ton and our loopback is in there. That it is. All right, and then we don't need to do any of this work on our spokes. All we have to do is change the loopback IPs. So we'll throw that up on spoke one, onto spoke two, and finally spoke three. So show IP route, EIGRP. All right, looks like our loopbacks are in there, and mm, I think we're missing one. Yeah, we're missing spoke ones. EIGRP, EIGRP, and there we go. Helps if you type it right. Strange. Oh, I think I see what happened. Yeah, I know exactly what happened. Hooray! Not paying attention because our TMVPN cloud is 172.16.10. That's my fault. So we'll just change that really quick on the loop back to be 172.16.100.100. Why not? All right. Cool. So we have our next top addresses in the routing table are correct. To get to 162020, we're going to um, the tunnel IP address on router two. And to get to 100100, 100, we're gonna use 10.10, .10, which is the tunnel interface for spoke one. 
So if we ping, we'll do a show DMVPN first to show that there's no dynamic tunnels. We ping 172, 16, 100, 100. We'll see we built that dynamic tunnel to spoke one. So and just, just to demonstrate what happens if you don't change next hop self so you can't call me a liar. If we turn next hop self back on, it'll resync EIGRP. We can clear DMVPN session to clear out all those dynamic tunnels. All right, so we'll do show DMVPN, which is just have our static tunnel that we do. We'll do show IP route, EIGRP. And now you can see that we're showing just the hub router as the next hop for all these EIGRP networks. And now when I ping 172, 16, 100, 100, <clears throat> the ping still works, which can be very misleading, but oh, I built the dynamic tunnel anyway. Son of a gun. So it's still built the dynamic tunnel, but if we do show IP Ceph for 172, 16, 100, 100, we can see that the next hop is still 172, 16, 10.1. So it's still built that dynamic tunnel, but if you trace route this, you'll see that it's still going through the hub first. and it kind of defeats the point of having DMVPN if you're doing just strictly hub and spoke routing. So <clears throat> that's EIGRP. I won't waste any more time on it. Just showing you the caveats there that turning off split horizons so you actually send your network advertisements back out uh, on your head end, and then also disabling next hop self. That way, um, each of the spoke routers isn't trying to route all of their DMVPN traffic through the hub. So um, I think we can do OSPF really quick. I don't want to make this video too terribly long. But um, the only caveats with OSPF is on the head end, we want to do IP OSPF network is going to be a broadcast network. IP OSPF priority is 255. Then we'll do router OSPF1. Network 172.16.0.0.255.255. We'll put all that in area zero. So that's our head end config. And then we're going to do almost the exact same thing on the spokes, but we don't want any of the spokes to ever become the designated router. We'll do that there, there there and then also no router EIGRP that way we can see OSBF in action. Alright so OSBF still coming up <clears throat> we're in two way. Give it just a minute there. Maybe many minutes, who knows? OSBF is just going to take its sweet time. All right. <clears throat> so we can do show IP route, OSBF. We'll see everything. Looks like it's routing right definitely from the hub. Show IP route, OSBF and spoke to. You'll notice our next hop addresses are correct. We can ping 172.16. We'll do 30.30 .30 from spoke to. We'll do our show DMVPN to show that we have our dynamic tunnel built. We do. Then we'll just trace route it to confirm that we're not going through the hub to reach Spoke 3's loopback. And we're not. Outstanding. <clears throat> so again, I don't want to make the video too terribly long. There's some other re there's reasons that you want to use OSBF broadcast and DMVPN. Uh, instead of using like a point to multi point, and I won't demonstrate it really quick because it'll take more time. <laughs> but um, the reason you don't want to do point to multi point, and feel free to lab this out, um, the reason you don't want to do point to multi point is you could do point to multi point and you'd have all your OSBF neighbors come up. Um, pings would work, routing would look like it's working just fine, but what you'd notice if you looked closely at your, at your Ceph table, and even your routing table, you'd notice that all your spokes um, would show the hub as their next hop for all networks. So again, that would be the issue of hub and spoke routing. Spoke 2 would be going through the hub to reach the loop back on spoke 3. And even if those dynamic tunnels come up, you wouldn't be utilizing them. <clears throat> so yeah, with your EIGRP, it's no split horizon and no IP next hop self. 
with OSPF, make sure that the hub is always the DR and change your network type to broadcast.